This is one in a series of videos on CPU optimization. CPU optimization is about how to write code efficiently that uses the CPU. This video is about understanding CPU usage. We will take a look at what kind of code causes high CPU and how we can prevent that from happening. Before we continue, I want you to take a self-assessment quiz on how much you know about the CPU. You can do that by going to objectzen.com slash CPU quiz. This quiz will not reveal the right answers to the questions, but it will tell you how many points you got right. So you can actually take this quiz before the video and then also take it after the video to see how much you learned from this video. So go ahead, pause this video and go take the quiz. In order to understand CPU usage, we have to understand the CPU first. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and is the heart of the computer. It's responsible for doing the calculations, which is handled by the processor. But in addition, it's also responsible for moving data in and out of the processor. Also, it's responsible for controlling the different components of the computer. High CPU usage is caused by a burst of CPU bounded operations. So let's take a look at what are CPU bounded operations. Right, we have several categories. First, there's arithmetic operations. These are the uh, adds, subtractions, multiplications, and division operators that are issued to the CPU. There's also bitwise operations which work on the registers. And these are, you know, uh, for comparison or or bit shifting, right? So if you ever work in assembly, you should be familiar with these uh, instructions that are issued by the CPU. The context switching is when you need to to switch to another thread, right? So that means it has to reload all the state from off of the CPU and onto the CPU so they can resume another thread. Control flow is basically uh, when it needs to move data from certain uh, components to another component. So for example, from disk to memory or memory to CPU. To understand CPU, it's also important to understand the life cycle of a program. Right? So whenever you run a program, it goes into several states. It goes from new to runnable, and it switches between running and being blocked or waiting for some event to happen. And then finally, once it finishes, it goes into the terminated state. So of all these four states, the only state that uses CPU is when it's runnable, right? When it's blocked, it's idle and it's waiting for something to happen. And therefore it does not get, it does not use CPU usage or it does not get handled by the CPU. Every program has one or more threads. So if you're running a very simple program, like a simple main, there's only one thread, which is the main thread. But in a complex program, you can have multiple threads. Each thread is in one of these states, right? So states such as new, runnable, blocked, waiting, time waiting, and terminated, right? So as I said previously, the only time that a thread uses CPU is when it's in the runnable state. Right? So even though you have multiple threads within a program, not all threads are runnable. Right? Some threads may be blocked or waiting for certain events to happen. And those threads are considered idle and they do not use any CPU. So the goal to reduce CPU is to make sure that your thread is actually in the blocked or wait state. Right? So what causes threads to be blocked or wait? When a thread is sleeping, right? it's blocked. When the thread is synchronized, waiting for a certain event, it is blocked. When a thread is performing I.O., it's reading or writing files or performing some network calls. Most of the time, it's waiting for some event to happen, such as the data to return, right? So in those cases, the thread will be idle and, and, and will not be using much CPU. So now let's take a look at how threads are scheduled by the CPU. If you have a modern computer, you will notice that it will have multiple cores. Each of those cores can run one thread. So in a multi-core CPU, it can actually run more than one thread simultaneously. 
right? So what that means is if I have a dual core, that means I can run two threads simultaneously and quad core, I can run four threads. And right now, if you use Intel CPU, you also have a hyper threaded. And what that means is you can actually run twice as many threads as cores. So in a quad core hyper threaded system, I can actually run eight threads simultaneously. So in, th in this case, we can run one thread per core and the maximum CPU usage of one thread is basically uh, one over the number of possible threads that you can run. So in a dual core system, one thread will take up 50% of the CPU because we can only run two threads at the same time, right? So in a dual core hyper threaded system, which can run four threads at the same time, that means that one thread will take up at the maximum of 25% of the CPU. So how do you reduce the high CPU usage? First, you can reduce the CPU bounded operations. Second is you can keep the threads in a bound or weighted state. So this means you can artificially put in more sleep commands to the thread. So then the thread will have more time to, to, to be idle. You can also perform more IO, right? Which will be IO bound and not CPU bound. You can, uh, wait for other threads to complete, right? And this will basically make the thread uh, blocked and therefore it will not use any CPU. You can also reduce the number of active threads, right? If you have multiple threads running, it will naturally use more CPU because each thread has to be scheduled on a core. And if you have more than more threads than there are cores and the CPU is gonna be more busy trying to, to process those requests. In this video, we took a look at what causes high CPU usage, and we found that it's because there's a burst of CPU bounded operations. We also went through the many states of threads and know that only the runnable state can cause CPU usage. Finally, we also explored the many techniques that we can use to reduce the CPU usage. I hope that you found this video useful and I'll see you next time.